Have you ever wished that you could just export your shots from Maya and be done with it instead of play blasting all of your cameras individually and compiling them in a video editing software every time you wanted to see how your sequence played out? If so, this video is for you. Hi, I'm Skitty, and I'm going to show you how to do this and more using Maya's camera sequencer. The main purpose of the camera sequencer is to lay out your shots to see how the cameras cut together, make any necessary adjustments, and play blast or even render out the compilation. Before we jump in, I really need to stress a word of caution. In most cases, a scene will have too many variables to make use of the camera sequencer. Most times, you'll want to have each individual shot its own Maya file, so you have individual control of things like character placement, set dressing, lighting, and so on. Believe it or not, these things are usually tweaked on a shot-to-shot -shot basis to make sure every shot is the best version of itself. You really only want to use the camera sequencer for small controlled scenes. Think in terms of small sets, few props, minimal amount of characters. This isn't to say it can't be done on bigger scenes, just know that you could potentially be limiting yourself down the line. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and open up the tool to get a feel for the layout. Go up to the Windows tab, hover over Animation Editors, and select Camera Sequencer. Navigation in here should feel familiar if you use the Graph Editor or the Dope Sheet, which you should. In our Shot View here, we can Alt Middlemost Drag to pan our view. Under the Shot View, we have an editor for our soundtrack and our playback control under that. To add a shot to our sequence, go up to Create and hit the Option box next to Shot. Select which camera you want to create a shot from, name it Shot 1 unless you give it a real naming convention, and then set the shot start and end times. These are the frames on your timeline you want to use, not the frame numbers in the camera sequencer, but I'll talk more on that later. Next we choose where we want the shot to go under the New Shot Placement tab. We can insert on current frame, after the current shot, before the current shot, at the end of our existing sequence, or manual. The current frame can be adjusted by simply moving it on your time slider, so it's more or less the default choice. Where we don't already have any shots in our sequence, I'm going to set this to current frame on frame 1 and start the shot on the timeline's frame 25, omitting frames 1 through 24. Now we have our first shot in our sequence, represented by this block. We can drag around the shot in our sequence, or shift select multiple shots to drag around if we had them. I'm going to go ahead and add a couple more shots to work with. By default, they all go on the top track, but I find it easier to look at if they're on multiple tracks. Now if we click play in our sequencer, our viewport will play all of the camera cuts we made. But if we click play on the timeline, it only plays that viewport's active camera. If we aren't happy with the length of a shot, we have a couple of options. If we look at one of our shots, there's two numbers on each side of the block the left representing the beginning of the shot, and the right representing the end. The numbers on the top are telling us what frames we took from our timeline to add to our sequence, and the bottom numbers tell us when the shot starts and ends in the sequence. This is crucial information if you start cutting frames. To edit these frame numbers, we can simply click on them to type in a new number, or if you'd rather it feel like your typical video editing software, we can trim them by dragging the top corners. We can also shift the shots around so the clips overlap. Whichever clip is on top is what will be visible. If we select a shot, we can delete it with the delete key on our keyboard, or simply skip a camera by right-clicking on the shot and selecting mute. We can add audio to our sequence by selecting the shot you want to add to, going up to File, and selecting Import Shot Audio. You can also add an image plane if you like. To do this, right-click on the shot you're adding to, and select Attach Image Plane. While we're in here messing around with our shots, we can play blast at any time to see what it looks like by right-clicking a shot, or group of shots, and hitting Play Blast. Once the sequence is edited the way we want, it's time to turn it into a master camera. Select all the shots in your sequence, and go to Create, Ubercam. Now if we change our viewport to look through Ubercam, all your cuts should be visible. Just one thing to note, Ubercam defaults to start on frame 1, so if your animation doesn't start till, say, frame 50, you'll have to select the camera and shift the keys in the graph editor to line up with the animation. Now you can play blast or even render this camera to your heart's content. Leave a comment below if there's something you didn't understand, like and subscribe if you learned something, links to socials are in the description, and remember to always use a reference.